see why we call it chili con carne because the direct translation makes it sound nowhere near as tasty. So, this has been requested from Marco. Hey Marco, how are you? Marco's other request was that I go back in time in the video that I went around to get some eggs, I fall over with the eggs and smash them on the floor. Just for comical value, right? I appreciate what you're saying, but no. How about no? How about you fall over and smash some eggs? Funny man. Anyway, so chili con carne. I love chili con carne. I, I, I really do. I don't have a recipe per se, um, as in my own, but what I've done is today I've created a recipe. So I've spent the last, well, I've spent very little time doing it to be fair, researched a few recipes, went, don't like any of you, they're all shit. So out of all the things I've found on chili con carne, they're all a bit rubbish. They're all, grab yourself some mint, some onions, teaspoon of ground cumin, teaspoon of paprika, some tomatoes tinned, some kidney beans tinned, um, some beef stock, Boily, boily, you've got chili con carne. Boom, maybe some chili in there too, of course. If I didn't mention chili, there definitely should be chili in there. Um, I thought that's rubbish. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm not some sort of expert on chili con carne, but I'm about to give you, a, make a recipe, which is, I, I, I haven't made it yet, so I'm gonna, as we go along this, we're gonna see if it works. And if at the end of this video it doesn't work, I might still put it up for you, just to show that us experts, well, I'm not an expert, am I? Professionals, I'm a professional, but crazily enough, we still, we uh, trial and error. So today's chili con carne, prepare yourself for this ingredient list because it, it is pretty exciting stuff. All right, where are we are? Are we, in, are we in the ingredient zone? Oh, hello. In the ingredient zone. So, usual suspects, we do have onions. I've gone with the diced beef option. I mean, feel free to use beef mints because that's all you got. I just want some, oh, it's just some slow cooked beef in there. I just think it's gonna be amazing. So you can do this in a slow cooker if you're lazy, um, or if you want to actually, you know, do it properly, do it in a pan. Or you can do it in the oven too, but pan's the one I'm going with. So some diced beef, shin meat would be good. Anything with a bit of fat in, to be fair. Don't be dicing up fillet steak, you mental lavish bastard. Uh, just, here we go. Um, red peppers, I'm gonna fire roast them in a minute, just to get them extra sexy. If you can't be asked fire roasting them, just dice them and put them in. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, not gonna hunt you down or anything like that. Um, spice wise, cumin seeds, seeds. Not ground cumin, I've got ground cumin out there. The lazy man's cumin, I call ground cumin. The lazy man's, because it's just nowhere near as good. I think I went through it with nutmeg the other week. Same product, it's got a very small shelf life. So I'm gonna pan, I'm gonna fry up some cumin seeds and grind them in a minute. I'm gonna go through that. Chili flakes. I'm gonna use very few of them because I'll get to the chili in a minute and some paprika at the bottom. Whoop, paprika. All right, the better the paprika you can use, the tastier it is. And that goes with every single ingredient ever known to man. So I won't say anything stupid like that again. I probably will, because let's all not love the sound of my voice, really. Um, so beyond that, tin of Guinness. Um, any ale or stout will do. And if you haven't got them, water, that'll be fine. Uh, not as nice, but it'll do. A tin of uh, chopped tomatoes. We'll get to you in a second. A tin of kidney beans. You want to drain them off because the shit that's in them is absolutely disgusting. Something about kidney beans and just gives off this murky good stuff, right? Um, dark chocolate. Yeah, that's when it starts getting a little bit sexy, isn't it? Dark chocolate. Um, it needs a bit of sweetness. So if you haven't got dark chocolate, sugar will do, or molasses is nice. My sister Zoe makes a very good chili con carne and she uses molasses. So molasses is fine. Treacle would do. Just start thinking outside the box. What's something really, oh, it's a really earthy sweetness, you know, like so I said, the dark treacles, the molasses. Probably palm sugar would be quite nice too. Obviously good palm sugar, not ones that's killed orangutans. Don't want any of that sort of stuff. That's more, more palm oil, but there's some palm sugars aren't so good too. Look at my hands. Boop, 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 boo. Um, okay, now let's get to the start of the show. I was given this gift yesterday, along with a couple of other tins of chili uh, off, the, off the Joneses. And I'm very, very happy with this. This, this is a uh, pickled chili, so a little bit of vinegary flavor too, which is great, because uh, vinegar and stewed meats and stuff, it's all right. This stuff is bonkers hot like I mean proper hot but good flavor too like on the Richter scale it's high it is very hot I, I don't think that does it justice I'm not gonna lie it's very hot I'm gonna put that in near the end so that that won't that will make a bit of a, a show later on so 
We've got all these ingredients, but we've got to do a few things first. So let me get you back over here. Hand cam, hello, coffee time. All right. To kick off with, then you get some spices going. Now, we've already got a really hot pan over here, steaming away. That's been heat. It's way too hot, isn't it? Whoa, okay, let's keep that to a side. Cumin seeds, water and pestle. Let's get amongst it. Um, ground cumin, poor man's cumin, as we call it. Um, it's just not as good. Uh, you, use, you use cumin seeds and grind it for anything you usually use cumin for, you'll thank me for the rest of your life. So, I'm only using 800 grams of meat. I'll, I'll actually do a little recipe card for you again. I'm quite liking the recipe card uh, sort of thing. I'm gonna, I want for this recipe, I want, what do I? I'm gonna have two teaspoons of cumin. That equates to handful. No, no, not handful. Um, it's about that many. They're in the pan, it's probably too many. It's fine. And this is already a really hot pan, so I'm probably not gonna have to put this back on the heat. I might just put that there. No, it's, it's, oh, you can, see, you can see it's smoking. Just keep moving them about. Keep moving them about. And you wanna cook it till it's fragrant. What's that mean? Until you can smell it. You should know the English language by now, people. Most of you are old enough to at least learn a few words. Cook till fragrant means until you can smell it. You can also see the colour of seeds starting to change. If they've gone black, it's too far, right? Once you go black, you can't go back. Not sure that's where the saying was from, but we're gonna stick with it, right? So, and what you're doing here is you're toasting them. Number one, toast them, get some good toasty flavour. Two, you're warming them up so that when you go to uh, grind them in a minute, all kinds of goodness is gonna happen, you know what? All kinds of goodness. Put that on the side. That is absolutely doing itself no problems at all, just sitting there in a hot pan, and I haven't put that back on the heat. So I heated up a pan really hot, put the cumin seeds in, and they're just doing their thing. Okay, now, I'm gonna get my cumin seeds in here. There we go, pour them in. Um, now along with my cumin seeds, I do want a little bit of chilli and a bit of salt. What I have left from the other day is, when I was making chilli honeycomb, I had some rose petals with crushed chilli and a bit of salt, which is in there. So I'm going to add a bit of that in there, so it's going to zhuzh it up. So we've got a little bit of rose petal in our chilli con carne. I know, crazy isn't it? Alright, so there we go, in she goes. I'm going to put my hand over the mortar and pestle and give it a bit of a Tap, tap, tappy, and grindy, grindy, grindy. Tap, 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 grindy, grindy, grindy. So on and so forth. And because it's warm, it grinds up very quickly. Mm. And if you've got a few bit, I mean, <coughs> whoa, got the back of me throat. Doesn't need to be, look at the bench shaking around like a crazy man. Let's get that out of the way. Um, it doesn't have to be ground into powder. Once again, a bit of chunk is not a bad thing. So, we now have my cumin, chilli, and salt, spice mix. <coughs> Woo, that chilli's got a kick. Okay, I'm gonna add my paprika into that. Exactly, uh, yeah, tablespoon. I'll do a proper recipe for you later on. Nah, I'll go a bit more of that, sod it. Just gonna mix that all up, but I'm only putting these together. There's no need to put these together. You can keep them separate, but now I know all my spices in this one thing. So in here, I've cumin ground up, paprika, salt, rose petals, and chili. Told you, this is gonna be the best chili con carne. Also Ben, oh Benno. Oh, hey Benno. Benno asked for some, uh, he asked for like chili con carne with my stouts. I think I maybe did make, maybe made it once for him with um, the old stouty bojangles, but um, I can't remember. But anyway, love Benno. How are you, mate? Good, good. All right, so I've done that. Now, gonna move on to these. I'll take over the stove and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, we're gonna be fire roasting the peppers. For the fire roasting peppers, this will burn your house out. So you can do it on the barbecue out the back. You can do whatever you want. I'm literally on top of a burner, putting nothing on these, just straight red peppers, capsicums, whatever you want to call them. I don't care. Um, and put them on the burners. We want to get them until they're completely black all the way around. They'll start spitting and hissing and doing all kinds of brilliant stuff. Love it. Fire. Anyway, keep this up until we're black all the way around. We turn them and once they're done, 
we will actually put them in a bowl, put some cling film over the top and let them sweat so we can get the skin off and we end up some amazing flesh. Okay, I did forget garlic. Basically, because I'm trying to, you know, trip you up so you make a rubbish chili con carne and mine's always the best. No, I'm joking. So, the meat component. You want to start frying that off separately. If you put all this in a pot together and boil it, you probably would have something that's half tasty, but not good. Not good enough. So, I'm going to, while I'm actually chopping up some onions, I'm going to slowly drop myself a fry pan, heat it up. I'm going to start cooking off little batches of this in oil, and then once it's out, I'm just going to put it to one side so it's all sealed off. And what we do that is we try and seal the juices in, also give a bit of colour to your whole depth of flavour and colour. So we're going to do that. So we're going to put that to one side. I'm going to be cooking that off, as well as chopping up a bit of onion and garlic. Bizarre. So, once again, chopping onions. I always leave the, uh, that side on, flip it around. Give it a couple of notches. And you've got diced onions. Whoop, whoop. Go again for those playing at home. Cut them in half, leave the little uh, couple of words back going. I have to go. Whoop, 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 whoop. Dice the onions. The last bit you can just go sideways. Waste not, want not. Okay, so that's them. Move you to one side and some garlic. Give, chuck it through a garlic crusher thing if you like. I, I'm really against garlic presses. Um, I've often thought it just leaves too much behind for my liking. So I'm going to go slices of garlic like I always do. Um, I'm going to put more garlic in than my recipe will call for because um, I like garlic and I like cutting garlic, so all of you above. Alright, so there, rub rubbish your little bits of roots, we keep clean. Okay, I'm frying off some meat. Uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, so, the roasted red peppers. You can do this the day before. It's my favourite way of roasting red peppers. Um, purely because they don't, they don't collapse as much as the oven, oven roasted ones do. They've just also got a wicked flavour about them. So they look, oh, they just look cool, don't they? So, these are still a bit warm, that's fine. But you can see just how easily the, uh, the skin just rubs off with my fingers. And here we go, and you're just left with this, uh, just the colours on it are just incredible. So I mean, um, and I've got no real problem with a little bit of, I certainly don't start washing them. Uh, I mean, that's, You've, you'll have negated the entire point of actually getting some beautiful flavour on there. So I do a couple of cleans. My first clean will be essentially that sort of clean, which is lovely. That goes in a bowl. Then I'll probably change my gloves, uh, and rip off the, the flesh from the outside and get rid of the seeds in the middle. Uh, and then we're going to chop up this and it's going to go in with the beef and slow cook it and just get some wicked flavour. But this can be done days or you know weeks before. Just get a whole bunch of your peppers in and roast them all up. You can see how lovely and easy that's coming off. It's, it's quite therapeutic. It's quite, it's quite relaxing. All right, so now, take off my first glove. Look at that. Gangster. Um, I think I've misinterpreted the word gangster, really. Um, really hot, you can see. So just taking off that flesh part. Just want that seed at the top. That's hotter in the sun. Okay, so you, you guys can do it a little bit less in the in the warm styling. Okay, there we go. Put flesh in there. It's that simple. And, and do you know what? These are great for salads. You can marinate them in some like vinegar or something and store them away. No problem at all. So in there you got that. There's a few bits of uh, blackness still about. Oh, they're just going to add some wicked flavour. So there's going to be no problem at all. I'm going to chop them up and get back to you too. So now let's get to it. Let's start putting this together. So what we need is. A pot, this is big enough for this purpose. You can decide your own size pot because I can't make every decision in life for you, or essentially not many at all. Alright, so we get some uh, fire going. 
oil in your pan, don't care what kind of oil. Uh, so I've already got the, uh, the meat cooked off, beautiful. Over on the bench here, we've still got onions and stuff. I'm gonna go grab the onions from the bench. Put them in the pot first, for the garlic. There we go. You need to find yourself the world's largest spoon, supposedly. Don't have a go at that. Like every time you're cooking off some onions, salt goes in there. And as I've said that before, it just sort of a, brings out a little bit of moisture from the, uh, from the onion, stops them from burning. Let's start the caramelising process a little bit quicker and, and more successful. So we're just going to get these onions sort of what we call sweating down. Which, as you can imagine, you get chucked in a pot with some hot oil, you'll be sweating as well. So, cooking this down for a little bit. Once the onions are cooked down, and a posh all the beef in there, that will go in. The roasted red peppers will go in. The tin of tomatoes will go in. Stouty bojangles will go in. Um, and, and as soon as the onions are sweat off, that's actually when I'm gonna put the spice things. I like to give them a bit of a fry in the pan too. Uh, before I put everything else in. And then we'll look at the, the liquid content of the pot and think this is gonna simmer for probably about two hours really, probably. Uh, two hours of a simmer on the stove. If you put it in the oven, probably 160 for three hours, it'll probably be cooked if you use a slow cooker. Follow the recipes on your slow cooker. Um, I've had enough of hearing about slow cookers. Everyone goes on about their slow cooker like it's some sort of miracle machine. Oh, I put something on in the middle of the morning and come back and it's great and I, Whoopty whoop, mate, whoopty whoop. It's taking me out of a job, you see. I'm, I'm bitter about the slow cookers. One day, there'll be a big row of slow cookers. No chefs. And then, then you'll be laughing, will you? Will you? You'll be thinking that's funny, will you? No, no, anyway. Got off tangent there. Um, so we're cooking away. So, spice wise, get out about. I've, I've done way too many spices. So, I'm not going to put them all in. So it's cooking away, dry, dry cooking that, that's fine. In she goes, right, meat's going in next. Oh, sizzly, sizzly, a little bit of juice there. Oh, where'd he go? I've lost a piece of meat somewhere, hang on, I'm finding it. Here she is, in she goes, all right. Once again, if you don't have diced beef, use mince, don't care. Um, Roasted red peppers, you're going in. Fire roasted peppers, nonetheless. All right, that's good. Get a good pot full of deliciousness here. Oh yeah, here we go. Tin of chunky tomatoes, chopped. Chopped tomatoes and a rich tomato juice. Mmm. Okay, that's it. All right, now we need some liquid of some form. And choose in Irish water, as they call it. No, they don't, but they should. Um, oh, I love to hit a widget. In she goes. Um, I just think stout gives it a nice sort of a nice little bit of a flavour. Like any sort of ale would do, do well. Any really real proper ale. I don't think you should start putting a bottle of Heineken in there or something like that. It's a bit light and a bit rubbish. Um, so let's have a bit of a look what we're talking here. So. Not gonna stand that would be delicious. Let's see where we're at. That's pretty good already. We've got nowhere near the cooking time. So I'm expecting seven two hours. I'm gonna go. Oh, a litre of water. And I might just keep topping up water as we go, because I really want this to be quite thick at the end. Um because I like my chili con carne to be thick. Everyone should do. I mean, it's not a, it's not a soup, is it? Um, and then this chili con carne we can use for so many things. We can use it inside tacos. We can make chili con carne on a bed of potatoes and bake it off with cheese on top. We can make um, fajitas. We, we can do nacho. It, it's just endless what you can do here. I'll just even whack it in between two bits of white bread, put it in your jaffle maker. <whistles> Tastiest toasted sandwich you'll ever, ever have. Okay, so here we go, simmering away. Do you know what? I was going to do a time lapse of it cooking, but that could be the most boring thing on God's earth. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave you and come back when this is somewhat better. Hola. Okay. Gone into the future. A couple hours into the future. It's all right. I'm a time traveller. 
Um, so, the chili con carne, let's grab it. A quick squeeze of what it's looking like. So, about three minutes ago, I put some kidney beans in there just so they get a bit of the flavour, but then don't. There we go, look at that. They get some of the flavour, but they haven't broken down. All the meat started to break down, and I'll go through that in just one second, but that's looking pretty good. So, because we use like shin or something that's got um, loads of tendons in, tendons are nature's fudge, right? So you cook down tendons and bits of like sinew and stuff, they become fudgy as hell, right? That's what we want. Once it's fudgy, the meat will just fall apart. So, there's a piece of meat left still. Here's a spoon, completely just falls apart. And on the bench, amazing, cool. So, I actually got in there just before, just before I put the kidney beans in, I got in a pot, I smashed the meat up against the side of the thing, because I want it a little bit. Still want some chunks of meat, but also want a bit uh, broken down a bit. This will thicken up a little bit once it's cold. So I mean, uh, that's a bit looser than I would like, than I particularly like at this moment in time, but that's gonna thicken up. Plus we're gonna put a bit of chocolate in and more chili. So let's have a bit of a taste, see where we're at. Be nothing essentially wrong with serving that now, but I'm gonna go some salt. All right, and this is where we go. So if you haven't put, if you haven't got the chocolate and you're not doing the dark chocolate thing, you could put a bit of molasses in while it was cooking. Could stick or you could put it near the end. I prefer to put sugars in near the end so they don't catch on the pan and things like that. But for this much, I'm gonna go start off with a couple of tablespoons of dark chocolate. A couple of blocks. Stir it through. This will make it, just give the bitterness, that's 77% dark chocolate. So you can get as bitter as you can get. If you didn't have that, coca nibs would actually be all right. And it's not like, it's not like I've just come up with this. This is from Mexico. It's a Mexican recipe, or maybe it is. It sounds Mexican. Uh, and they love a bit of cacao, don't they? Don't they? Don't they? Uh, yeah, so like, this is possibly what was meant to be in it. But I, I just like it. Let's have a go. Oh. Rich chocolatey goodness. Okay, now. I'm gonna call it the star of the show. This stuff is, oh, just look at the oily goodness. Oh, King Naga, okay. This stuff is super hot. I'm gonna put like basically a tablespoon in here. And I'm expecting that to absolutely just rip, rip my mouth apart. So let's have a go. Oh, I really like hot stuff, so I, I've gone quite a bit in there, okay? Let's have a go at what this is chatting. And myself a spoon because I'm not going to use that spoon because that would be the craziest thing we've done all day. Okay, so I mean, and there's all kinds of random chilies around the world. I remember me and my mate Stocky, we had some Dave's Insanity sauce years ago. Um, he may have punched me in the head because I gave him too much of it. Rings a bell. Um, this one has flavour and heat. Well, it's good. You know what? It could take some more, but I'm gonna leave that because it let's have another quick peruse with the old flavour buds. Woo! No, got no time. Wee! Okay, yeah, no, that's bloody hot. Alright, mustn't have mixed it in the first time. So that's off its tits. Wowzers. Okay, cool. Alright, so. This, chili con carne, amazing. Let's have a look. Whoop. Doesn't look the prettiest of things, does it? But it's delicious. You could serve this on top of rice. Um, we could serve it in fajitas, you could do tacos with it. Quite a nice thing to do for the family is if you cook off some potatoes, new potatoes, big potatoes, I don't care, potatoes. Um, slice them off and fry them, so then you've got fried potatoes. Put them in the bottom of a tray, tip this all over the top, then some more jalapenos, then some cheese, and bake it off. Got some crazy chili con carne bake. That, that is good. Good, 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 good. Anyway, that was really annoying. Wish I hadn't done that, because now it's gotta be there. Anyway, um, I'll try and take a photo of this with some meals over the weekend and put that at the end of the video, magically. Anyway, thank you very much. 
and goodbye.